there's enough money for everybody. There's a big enough pie for each of us to get a slice. I know it's been a long time since I posted a video. I just had to really get my stuff together and get my mind right. And I did a complete rebrand of my business. So um, if you guys haven't seen, my old business name was Indie Raw Hair and I rebranded and so a whole different name, whole different color scheme, whole different vision, whole different mission. And it's been, I decided to rebrand in February of this year, February, 2020. And I launched in October. And as you can see, it took a while to get relaunched. No, it's no fault of anybody's or reason. It's just the pace I decided to go because I really want my business to last for a long, long time. So I understand when things, when I, when things that are valuable and things that need a great foundation is going to take longer to achieve those things. So that's why my rebrand took so much longer. So I'm have all the links to my website and my Instagram pages for you to follow me and follow my journey, follow my business as it grows. And I would love for you guys to be tuned. First things first, I have my phone here with my notes. I made notes for this um, video because uh, I want to make sure everything's thought out and blah, blah. So anyways, first tip is your business is not for you. What I mean for me is when you're starting a business, I've seen people create brands around what they like personally. And that is a no-no in business. So... You can create a business that you like, but the business is not for you. And what I mean by that is your business name, the way your logo looks, the way the name of your company. A lot of companies are starting to like copy and paste businesses now. So what you want to do is stand out. So if you're a new wig business and your business name has what, bougie brat, diamond, lux, um, y'all yeah, get what I'm saying it's kind of like you're blending into everything that's out there already so you really just want to sit down and think about your business name search it and see if it's taken and yeah so i'm gonna give you guys a perfect example so when i started my business i named my first business name guys was fleeky collections when i created the name it was trendy back then when we're on fleek or fleeky was on trend but now people's not really using that word anymore and every time i told somebody that name they always had a problem spelling they were like huh what yeah so i was like that name is not gonna work so i had to brainstorm a new name and then i watched some videos on youtube by um i forget her name but i'll tag her below um she basically said in her YouTube video to create your hair business name or wig business name by the city you are in and hair. Because when people are hashtag searching or searching for hair in their area, they'll my name will pop up in the SEO. So I live here in Indianapolis, Indiana. So I decided to name my business Indie Raw Hair. Why I, when I first created the name, I was confident about it. It was relevant to people here in Indianapolis. People got it. Some people felt like it was like, Cause I, cause it was like uh, indie, right here, so Indian hair, and a lot of my friends like that name, so I went with that name, and then I had to change the name because the name doesn't really have any meaning to my clients or my customers. It's just a name off of where I'm from, so I had to re basically come up with a new name, and I came up with Style in a Box. So Style in a Box for me means uh. You get an ultimate hairstyle in a box ready to go. So my clients get units, custom made units that all they really have to do is have their hair braided down or slicked back as flat as possible and put their units on and maybe a little shake or maybe they got to flatten out the top real quick and they're ready to go. So it's no gluing, no really no products, no anything when they receive the units and they can rock their units until they want another unit or until the unit needs made. So I'm just starting out. So right now I have like two collections, but I will definitely grow that. And so my business name now serves, I have a meaning behind my business name. Instead of having indie raw hair, style in a box resonates with my clients and it has a vision and a mission and it's besides it being indie raw hair off of just my location the second thing you need to know when starting a business is i highly 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 recommend this if you don't do anything else do this 
if you got to stack your money for it, if you got whatever you got to do, do this. Hire a business coach or a business strategist or if you can find a mentor that's been in business for a while that's willing to mentor you for a low cost or for free because I know it's, as a new business or somebody you know um trying to get into business funds aren't always readily just excessively available and getting a grant or a loan is really kind of really really hard and you might just have to stack your coin up sis to get this business coach so anyways when I first started my business, I was strictly just winging it, winging it. So basically, I was doing, I was doing research and stuff, but I was basically doing things that I've seen other people doing on the internet, and I had no real strategy behind what I was doing, and that that cost me hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands. I haven't even counted it because I don't want to know. It's in the past. <laughs> so why I say that is because I went. Remember in the last uh. Two seconds i said that i named my business indie raw hair i got shirts printed i got business cards done i got custom made bags done i bought i pay for my logo i pay for my tags i had my llc under that name i had um uh graphics done all types of stuff done under indie raw hair for me to just have to start over with styling a box so the reason I hired a business, my business coach, her name is Kristen Dickerson, um, with all things Chris on Instagram, you could go on there and follow her. I believe she's on Facebook too. And, um, her website is allthingschris.com and you get on there and consult with her and see if that's, she, you know, you, you get it. So when I started working with her, she basically told me what I needed to know, came up with a plan, a strategy, a vision. She helped me curate everything. And now Style in the Box is now born. So now instead of being confused in business and not knowing the next steps and winging it, I have somebody behind me that who's experienced in their own business that can tell me yay, nay, or I need to do better. I need to rethink that or reconsider this, reconsider that. And it has helped me tremendously and the way like my business looks now and I feel more confident like, I feel very confident in my business now compared to when I had indie raw hair indie raw hair I was very I was scared to pitch my business to people like tell people what it's about because I was so confused and I was really just winging it but now I'm real confident I know what's going on I know what to do I love the way Sally in the Box look I like the feel of her and I know who I'm targeting and I know what's going on. So if you have business coaches aren't usually that cheap. They're not cheap. They're actually pretty expensive. And I the investment was very, very worth it. And if you can invest, save your coin up to invest in a business coach. If not, if you have like everybody could spare a few bucks to get a webinar or or e-class or e-books. Or e I say start there and then see what you can do. And then eventually your end goal should be to hire a business coach or business strategist to help you take your business to the next level. Okay, the third thing I have is do not purchase. You, you started a business, you got your name, you got everything, everything looks good, sounds good. Do not go out and purchase a whole bunch of inventory and have no way to sell it. Don't have no way to get rid of it. Unless you're just popular and people, you're influenced, you're in, influential and people are just gonna buy what you put out. But for the average Joe person starting, that's not a real realistic thing for them. So do not go out and buy a whole thousands of dollars, hundreds of, hundreds of dollars worth of inventory with no way to push it. That doesn't make no sense. I did that also as well. I bought a whole bunch of inventory and had no way to sell it. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know anything, no strategies, no nothing. And I was stuck with this inventory. Fortunately, I was able to sell this inventory last year um, when things started to pick up under Indie Raw here before I rebranded. So I was able to get rid of that inventory and thank God and make that money back to reinvest into my business. So definitely don't do that at all. You can use that money to put into your business coach, into getting your business foundation down and doing those things first before you just purchase a whole bunch of things. Fourth thing is have money to invest in your business. And I'm not saying you need a whole bunch of money, but I know there's a lot of people out here that saying you could make 
you could start your business with zero dollars and like do that type of thing that is not true because yeah we have facebook and instagram we have word of mouth but it costs money to make money if that makes sense and how i see like for if you believe in god or in the universe or whatever you believe in it, it's energy so you, what you put out you usually get it back in so if the universe or god see you put in money or you're saving money to put into this it's gonna bring it back so money to invest because you need to invest in your coach you need to invest in packaging you need to invest in marketing you need to invest in ads that's marketing you need to invest in inventory so you need some sort of dollar amount to start with and i would recommend at least saving three to five thousand dollars to save your business i know it seems like a lot of money or if you're not making much money um yeah but you can start with less than that but like I said, I recommend getting you your business coach. Um, some business coaches do do payment plans and stuff like that. So definitely have money to invest. You have to invest in a photo shoot. You have to invest in clothes. You have to invest in just a lot of things that you don't think about. You have to spend money on when starting a business. Me, I went in. Fortunately, I was in a position to invest a good amount of money in my business. So... Um, my situation is different from everybody's. Everybody's situation is different, but for me, I had I had more than enough money to start my business. Even starting over, I had more than enough. So it's like, if you're somebody who's not really making that much money or you're, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you might have to just reduce, pick up another, pick up a side hustle, pick up a second job, do something to bring in that extra income so you can have the money to start your business. When you're starting a business, it is not something that's gonna happen overnight. Um, I am at cur actually currently in school, uh, trying to get my associates in business administration and I got my technical certificate entrepreneurship. So at um, my local community college. So they, the IRS does not expect you to make a profit in your business in three years. So the IRS gives you three years to make a profit. And what profit isn't your revenue. So I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that stuff, but they give you three years to make a profit in your business. That just shows you that business business and making money in business takes a long time. It's not something you hear overnight ex overnight successes on Instagram all the time, but in reality, the people who really have like long standing brands that are been here for a while have started 10 years ago. I've been like, for example, Ming, her, she started, I believe she started her business in 2010. And it's 2020 now and I feel like she's just 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 reaping the full benefits of her of her effort so she's benefiting the harvest of her labor finally 10 years later so if you're gonna do this do it it's not uh something that needs to happen quick you don't actually you don't want it to happen quick I'll make another video on that on why last but, tip is stick with the process fail forward and fail fast. What I mean by that is, like I was just saying, if you're gonna do this, you can't have an ounce of quit in your soul. Like, I'm to the point to where, like this has to work out for me. And it's like, I mean, I can go to, I don't work. I go to school right now and I take care of my son and I have a boyfriend and I have a life. And I can go to work. What's really stopping me from going to work? But that I don't. I feel like the time I'm gonna put in at a job to get a check, I can be putting the effort into my business and make sure it's growing. So right now I'm actually sacrificing a lot by not working and like having like nicer things and stuff like that. So I've basically dedicated my life and my time to my business and my family. And I don't have a quit in me. Like at this point, it's like this, like I said, it has to work out. Um, and it's going to work out, you know? So that's why I wanted to share my journey with you guys to, sh to show you guys that some days are dark. Like it's really dark some days, honestly. Like some days is really doubtful. It's like, is this gonna happen? Like this cannot happen for me, but I always keep like at least a 1% of hope and I can't let that hope die. Like, even if it comes down so small, I can barely see it. I can't let it die. So, 
if you guys are starting, you want to start, you have started and things are moving slow, to not give up. If you do not give up, it's going to happen for you. And yeah. what I mean by fail forward and fail fast, that means if you are doing something in your business that's not working or making sense or it's costing your business any type of money, stop doing it. Like, I learned that in school. When in business, there are thousands of tech startups, big business startups, all that stuff. When something's not working in their business, they figured out absolutely fast and stop doing it. So what I mean by that is um, once you get with your business coach and she teaches you or he teaches you uh, target market and all that good stuff, you get into that or you can uh, research other videos on YouTube about target market um, that if you're offering a product that's not selling stop selling it because in business it's gonna cost you to sell it you know what I'm saying don't sell it if it's a service you're offering that's not resonating with the people you're selling to stop doing it and figure that out and do in stop spending your money on it your business stop having your business spend on it when it's not working so fail forward, figure out what works, figure out what don't work and stop doing it real quick. <laughs> you don't have the money to be wasting on things that are not working for your business, honestly. So yeah. also don't worry about competition. Um, it's competition, it's it's there, but I don't think it's as, as important as others make it seem because in the hair industry, the wig industry, there are, there's a market. So with the market, there are, a market is sellers and buyers. People looking to sell, people looking to buy. There are millions and millions of people on the market that wants to buy, but the supply is not there. Hence the prices of hair business. So don't worry about who Sally, Sue, Fred, Mac, what are their, what they are doing. You can get inspiration from them, but they're mostly gonna get their inspiration from somebody else. It's an ongoing cycle. So basically what I'm saying is those people that are at the top or who have made it already, they cannot service everybody. Even your top stylist in your city cannot service everybody that wants a wig or hair or something. They cannot do it, it's impossible. You know what I'm saying? It's, if they want to, they couldn't. So there's enough money for everybody. There's a big enough pie for each of us to get a slice. It's, it's, it's a lot. All you have to do is focus on you, focus on your business, have your vision, have no quit, and keep going. Don't worry about the extra stuff. If your friends and family don't support you, your friends and family are not your target customer. I'm sorry, get over it, it's okay, it's not a big deal. There are strangers out there that are willing to patronize your business and who have the money to patronize your business, depending on what direction you go to. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Excuse me for being gone for so long, but it's a lot of content that is coming. It's coming, it's coming. I have dedicated my channel to helping um, business owners before me and after me. And let's get to this coin and this bag together. Like that's all I'm here for. I'm here from here to help. And stay tuned for more videos. So like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.